And then I end over to you and, and to Thomas. Uh, okay, excellent. Thanks, Martha. Yeah. Uh, One second, let me share screen. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes, we could see it, Martha. Thank you very much. And thank you all for joining us today for Inno Day's virtual Vienna. And this is our second foray into a virtual hackathon. And so as we can see, we're off to a roaring start and it will only get better. Uh, my name is Mike Boyle. Thanks again for joining everyone who is currently on the Zoom session. I welcome everybody who is possibly watching us through the live stream on YouTube. And uh, in addition, I'd like to go ahead and emphasize that we are not just talking about Central European time. Our clock actually starts in Jakarta, which is five hours ahead of us. And so you will notice throughout the entire a virtual hackathon that we will be referring to Jakarta time or WIB. In addition, there will be times that we will have to end a little bit here because uh, we understand that the people in Indonesia would like to get some sleep as well. So uh, we are doing this hackathon a little bit different apart from the fact that this is virtual. We have one focus and that is tied to plastic. We have one customer or client, and that would be Plastic Panure, who will be the focus of that, of what we'll be working on the next 48 hours. And I'd like to go ahead and take the opportunity to highlight some of our educational partners, that being the TU Berlin, the Angewandte in Berlin, uh, sorry, in Vienna, the New Design University, the Wirtschaftsuniversität in Vienna, the Technikum in Vienna, and I should not forget the East-West Center. We'll talk a little bit more about the East-West Center moving forward. I'd like, also like to go ahead and thank all the mentors who have signed up to go ahead and participate for the next 48 hours. We're very appreciative. We have a we have a, a bigger crew than we expected, which is always very positive. With 25 teams, with 125 participants, I believe, and Monty, you'll keep me honest on any of these figures that perhaps I get them wrong. The one of the key elements is for us to make sure that we can support the teams and make sure that not only are we coming up with ideal solutions for our customer, that being plastic manure, but in addition, we want to make sure that the, the teams have an opportunity to really make something of their ideas. And that's what these next 48 hours are all about. I'd like to go ahead and highlight also, again, I mentioned the East-West Center. The, the center is an independent public nonprofit organization based in Honolulu, Hawaii. And it's funded by the US Congress. And then we have Lance Boyd, who is the, the main liaison from the East West Center, and of course, it's always, for me personally, a, a great joy to be able to work with Lance. So I would say without further ado, perhaps if I can go ahead and hand this over to Thomas Kohler, who is the main organizer of Inno Days, to talk a little bit about what Inno Days is all about and get you all up to speed on, tied to all of these points. Thomas, it's all yours. Thanks so much, Michael. Really appreciate it. Um, thanks everyone for, for being here. Um, I would also like to thank all our partners, Plastpreneur, uh, our education partners, Tech University in Berlin, the VU, uh, New Design University, and the East West Center. 
Uh, I want to make a quick announcement from one of our sponsors for those of you in Vienna. Um, a new space just opened that is called Spaces and they offered uh, to you if you are in Vienna to sit there um, during the inner days from nine to five. Uh, just send a quick email or call them to let them know that you're coming. As you can see from this photo here, they have plenty of space so you'll be able to keep the security distance um, and it will be I think a nice opportunity to maybe work from somewhere else. And um, yeah, it's a top facility that we would normally have hosted our event in, um, but that didn't happen. Um, we are um, taking advantage of this virtual format and uh, it's really excited that we can bring people together from all parts of the world. Maybe in the chat, if, if all of you can quickly just let us know, um, where you're from um, or where you're calling from. Maybe in chat, uh, let us know your country so we get a sense of who's in the room. Uh, Berlin, Vienna, Germany, Austria, Bosnia, London, Myanmar, Amsterdam. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing to, to make this work. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, we did enjoy our last virtual hackathon. Um, Three weeks ago, that was supposed to be in San Francisco. We did it online and it worked really well. So uh, we're happy to move to the virtual space. So um, with that, I'll quickly um, pitch the Inno Days to you and, and our visitors today uh, in the same way that you will have to pitch um, the ideas. Once I'm, I'm done, I'll also not take more than two minutes. Um, so what are the Inno, Inno Days? Um, First of all, um, Mark, can you forward? Um, every, every idea has to solve uh, a problem, right? Um, the first problem that we are addressing is the problem of the slides. <laughs> uh, the problem. Uh, that you know, when we when we want to learn innovation skills, um, there's really not a, an ideal way to do that. When you either uh, read uh, books about it or listen to uh, professors talk about it, um, can you keep forwarding, Martin? I'm having some issue with the screen. If you didn't realize that, I realized that. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so uh, learning to innovate is really, uh, in a way, like learning how to ride a bike. You have to do it. Um, if you fail, you have to stand up and um, try it again. So we want to provide our uh, student participants and young professionals an opportunity to not just read about innovation or listen to uh, professors, uh, except for those in the room. I am one in, in this case as well. But our goal is really to provide you with a hands-on learning experience. And then on the other side of our platform that we want to provide, we have company partners who usually struggle with searching for new business models. I mean, this event is a little special because we have a very innovative startup as a partner who probably has a lot of ideas what else they could do with their machines. But our goal is to support them in identifying new opportunities. Um, when we think about traditional corporates, oftentimes they look at new search fields like these horses um, have to look because of the blinders. Uh, we see that not only um, with horses, but um, this um, design has, has won award. Um, I think it helps you probably to focus, but it doesn't help you to look outside of your um, walls and, and within a narrow time or frame. So we really want to open up the perspective of our company partners. And uh, we do this by bringing companies uh, together with participants so that not only minds are open, but also the innovation processes are open uh, because that's, uh, we believe, the best way um, to generate innovation. So um, that's why we run uh, InnoDays. And um, we will have 40 hours to move from idea to prototype. And it's really about developing solutions together. The first part together 
means that uh, in the teams, we have design participants, business participants, and engineering participants collaborating um, with the company partners to build and test new ideas. The second part um, of building solutions together is the solution part. Um, ideas are worthless until we make them happen. Our goal is to make great progress towards an actual solution by prototyping these ideas, making them tangible. So at the end of the 48 hours, we don't want to just talk about the ideas, but we would like to see how your ideas can work, making them tangible so that we have a good starting point to take them further towards implementations. And then the final uh, part is the develop part, um, where it's really about um, moving through um, iterations of build, measure, learn. And this process will not be an easy one. Um, probably all aware that when we work with projects, oftentimes we start out with a lot of excitement, uh, but then as, as friction um, starts to come into play, uh, we might lose our initial enthusiasm. Um, we have to revise our ideas. We might have a confused company partner or we might be confused as team members by the mentors. So it'll be an up and down, but hopefully at the end, you will have had a great experience um, to learn a lot and to get to know uh, new people, create new ties with our expert mentors to then develop solutions together. With that, um, a few words about the how and then we'll get into the pitches. So we open up together now. We close on May 15th uh, in 40 hours at 3 p.m. In, in Europe and 8 uh, p.m. in Jakarta. We have mentoring sessions along the way where experts will support you from moving from idea to prototype. Every morning, there's a, a stand-up meeting, a check-in with your lead mentors. And then in the evening, at the end of the day, you will share your progress and discuss the next steps. In terms of the tools, uh, we will use Zoom for the opening, for the closing, and for the mentoring sessions, as well as for the lead mentor updates. Um, each lead mentor will take care of a set of teams and each lead mentor will have their own Zoom room. Um, for coordination, we use Slack. I hope everyone has joined. If not, um, we'll share the link with you. Make sure you join Slack. This is the place where we'll share updates. Each team has their own Slack channel um, for you to collaborate asynchronously with text and then um, for real-time voice video-based collaboration, we use Zoom. Sprintbase will be the tool for collaborating. We have several deliverables along the way. Marta will talk more about that. Um, for now, those are our um, communication, coordination, and collaboration tools that we use. We can uh, skip that, Marta. Um, I mentioned the lead mentors. I would like to briefly introduce them to you. Uh, we have Johannes Bogner um, taking care of the fashion and recycling category. Julian will work with the health teams. Andreas, education and sports. Mike will work on the teams that submitted construction ideas. And Marcus is focused on home decor ideas. So we took all the 127 ideas. We clustered them into these five buckets fashion and recycling ideas, health, education, sports, construction, and home decor. And you will be part of one lead mentor, depending on which team number you will have. Okay, we can go ahead. We have the morning check-in, the progress update. Um, you will find the links to the Zoom rooms on the website, and we'll also share them on Slack again. During the mentoring sessions, you will get a breakout room within your Zoom room, and then the lead mentors will join you 
they will work for about 15 minutes with you in the initial round. And then if there's more time needed, then um, they will also be available. And um, this is a great opportunity for you to exchange um, ideas, learn from the expertise from our mentors. Um, we really have a great pool of mentors. So again, thanks to all the mentors for joining. All right, um, final thing, the open office hours will have one room open all day. So if you have at any moment problems, questions, we will be in the open office. Um, so this is the room where you can always uh, join, where you then will be directed to other places or will answer your questions. All right, with that, um, we will get into the pitches. <coughs> Mike, um, you want to take over? And yeah, I, I just wanted to let you know, first of all, one of the key objectives here is to stay within time. We're giving all of the participants, well, two minutes to actually go ahead and deliver. And I'd like to go ahead and mention that we are actually two minutes ahead of time according to the schedule that you gave me, Toma. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, before we go into the pitches, I'd like to go ahead and give our company sponsor, Plastic Manure, an opportunity to talk about their operations and set the tone for our pitches. So if I could have uh, Rafaela or Surin. I'm going to start. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. Marta, are you sharing the screen or? Uh, the presentation is a small one. Uh, yeah, Thomas is sharing it because mine is just very okay. slow. So every time I click, it takes a. <laughs> okay, anyway, till we see the screen, uh, hello from my side. I'm Sören or Soren, maybe easier, or even <laughs> my last name so depending on wherever you come from just call me whatever is the easiest um, we are very excited to, uh, to be part of this you know, days and of the challenges we looked through the your ideas and the videos uh yesterday and there were some really really great ideas and we are really excited um, to spend the next 48 hours together um, and we start with a brief uh, overview. Some of you know or were part of the of the pre-sessions already and heard some of the stuff you're doing. Um, but maybe Thomas, now we can go quickly through our presentation to give everybody the the main overview. Um, yes, so we are based in Austria um, as a company, uh, and we are called a company doing circular, a circular economy and design studio. But our main project or brand at the moment is Plasticpreneur. We're a team of four people. On the next slide, it's uh, Flo, Rafi, Boris, and me. Um, and we do what we do because we care about each other and our planet. And we found two main challenges a couple of years ago when we have been in, in East Africa for a while. And this one was on the one side, the the unemployment rates, especially the youth unemployment, uh, and of course the topic plastic waste, which is uh, everywhere in the world, that there's a massive pollution, plastic waste is everywhere, and if not used in the right way, it just gets burned or lands up in the environment. Um, and we combined those two solutions and came up with uh, some ideas, and Rafaela will now explain <laughs> us what we're doing. Yeah, here you see um, the machines we developed in the last years, um, you find the, ex and the extruder, the injection machine, the shredder. Uh, and um, last two weeks, we developed also an, a manual shredder to where um, you can um, make this granule out of plastic waste uh, with your hands. So it's, it's also an opportunity um, to make these granules. And um, here you see also the molds. They are um, necessary to create this product made out of plastic waste. Uh, so you shred it in, first in the shredder machine or in the manual shredder, and then in the injection machine extruder, you can um, form and produce new products out of it. Next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you, sir. One, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Um, here you see uh, what we, you can, for instance, create uh, with the injection machine. There could be nuts there. Uh, um, 
clips, um, soap dishes, bricks, um, letters. There are so many things. Um, and when you are creative, there are no, nearly no limits. So next slide, please. And here, you, for, for instance, you have the building materials, uh, tiles for the roof or the ground. And um, you see in some areas, there are um, much plastic waste, but um, you cannot do um, anything without, with, with it. Uh, you can only burn it or it ends up in the ocean. And so you can, made out of single-use products, you can create long-lasting products that make sense locally. Here you see uh, the granule again and our machines where Flo is working with it and uh, some school supplies and letters and rulers. Next. <laughs> but um, these machines, um, yeah, are the tools and you can do nothing with, with them without an, an idea behind. So uh, when there are only the machines, you, um, you have great machines, but there is uh, some fields there. So product design, business developing, the recycling process, and um, always awareness building. Because when you are um, working with um, plastic waste, you came to the material, you see how it works and what you can do with, with it. And to just give a quick overview of what has happened the last couple of weeks due to the current situation. Um, also in 48 hours, so the time we spent now together, uh, in 48 hours we developed uh, face shields, which also comes from open source platforms, like some of you may know. Um, and they are a good protection against COVID-19. And next slide, please. Um, there you see the process. So basically we take the plastic waste, we have different threaders to put it small, we have the granules, we heat it, we inject it in a mold, and then at the end you have the product. And the very interesting thing for us in this case is that we developed it in less than four, or in, in 48 hours, uh, and we are sold over 3,500 pieces in Austria of it, but much more important that now people all over the world are basically uh, have the opportunity to take these machines and produce those facials locally. On the next slide, we can see that we are now uh, selling different kits, which are not important for us now. And on the next slide, we see where currently uh, people are using these tools. Um, so we shipped in the last two weeks quite a lot uh, out and thousands of those products are at the moment produced all over the place. Um, and that shows us also uh, how innovative it can be for people if they have access to these different tools. We are also on the next slide uh, working on different uh, applications and products. And that's also one of the main reasons why we're looking forward to this, this Inno Days together um, to get feedback or to hear ideas um, what is needed or what's possible. And on the next slide, we can see that on the one side, we can look at products through our machines. And we got a lot of questions from you in the Slack channels, um, what is possible and so on. Um, so there are some things or a lot of things which we can already produce with our machines. But on the other side, there are also some ideas or some topics which are not possible at the moment, but they give us the feedback that we know um, how we need to adapt the machines maybe to really create useful products in the future. So we will encourage you also if there may be products you're working on in the next days, they are not really working at the moment. We will encourage you to really work on them and, and design them or, or work on business models with them that we're able to um, adapt our machines to be able to then produce them together. And the last slide is just our saying that we are based in Austria, but our home is planet Earth. And I think these inner days really show um, that we are scattered all over the place, but working together on solutions. Thank you. OK, so thank you very much. Uh, Maybe some basic ground rules before we get started. We have, I believe, 24 teams. You have two minutes, two minutes to actually go ahead and give your pitch. And so with that, and waiting for the complication, which is appearing on my screen to actually go ahead and solve itself. 
I would like to go ahead and hand it over to team one. Um, and that would not be Christine, I believe, or what? Oh, sorry. Um, that would be Ruli. Uh, Ruli, you'd like to go ahead and get started, please. Uh, Ruli, I believe you're on the microphone. Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, I will I will do the presentation because uh, we okay, have apologies. Really have some technical issue, so I would do this for him. They were flexible, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, we haven't started the timer. Um, I can't share because you are sharing. Okay. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll stop. Now you can share it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, we can see your slide. Yeah. So, hello, everyone. Um, this is our in a day's idea pitch video. So, this is my idea. It's about saying no to the plastic. Um, so in the global south, um, people are suffered by the serious plastic pollution. On the other hand, plastic bags are, are widely used in those countries too. Um, the plastic bags are made for single use. They are soft and easy to break. Once it gets dirty, it's really difficult to clean and recycle. Uh, the government are uh, trying to deal with by deal with it by banning and taxing plastic bags. However, this is also widely discussed. Like paper bags are not much more envir environmental friendly. So, bring your own shopping bag might might sounds like a better solution. So, this is my personal experience, and it's. It's called uh, always forgot to bring the bad dilemma um, because when I go to the supermarket, I sometimes I go there spontaneously. I didn't really, really prepare to uh, to go shopping, so I didn't have a bag. And but if I buy much uh, a lot of stuff, I will need a bag. So then I ha I was forced to buy at least a paper bag or just buy another like a shopping bag, but which I don't really want to, to buy. Yeah. So with the plastic printer machine, circular plastic bag um, can easily to uh, be produced with low cost and easy process. Um, we can cooperate with local government uh, supermarket and local markets. For example, you can borrow the circular plastic bag that offer by the supermarket and pay the deposit and return it and get the money back when you next have visit. So it can greatly reduce the needs of the single use plastic bag. And in the same time, you can um, offer the customer a better shopping experience. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay, then uh, Yu Ming, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and move on to group number two, if we may, with this would be for uh, Federica. Yes. Okay, the stage is yours. Thank you. So hello everyone, I'm Federica from the Vienna University of Economics and Business. And today I will tell you about my business model, which is called Plastic Preneur for Women. So the objective of this business model is to give a new life and the opportunities for women in Kenya. For instance, in Kenya, many women like around big cities like Nairobi, they work as way speakers. Of course, as you can imagine, these workers, they do not have any access to social services or any protection, and they have to sell the plastic they collect to plastic trader who would buy a kilo of PET bottles for just five cents. And overall, there is an estimated of 6,000 people that collect waste in the Dandora Dam, which is a few kilometers away from Nairobi every day. 
So in a nutshell, women do not have a source of income, so they cannot sustain their family and uh, they constantly put their life in danger by working as a waste picker in uh, the local dams in uh, Kenya. So here comes my solution, which entails creating a program which is addressed to waste picker women. By doing so, we give them the tools to run the business and they can get a job and a safe source of income. So here is how it works. First of all, we would need to keep partnerships with the local organizations that support women and with the local hotels. Then we would set up small artisanal factories in Nairobi. At the third step, plasticpreneur people and experts will teach women how to use the tools and how to run the business. At this point, these women will be able to run their business and start producing. I was thinking about producing two main types of products, which will be products with traditional design that will be sold to tourists in Kenya and everyday use products. For what regards the plastic collection, uh, Plasticpreneur would provide uh, recycled bins, which would be located outside the workshop. And we'll also get the plastic waste from partner hotels. Then product will be sold through two main channels. So for instance, partner hotels will um, host pop-up stores where uh, um, their guests can buy the products. And there will also be a small shop located inside the workshop where people can go and buy everyday use products. Thank you for listening. Excellent, Federica, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and move on to group number three and that would be Pia. Pia, are you ready? Of course I am. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, then the stage is yours. Yes, I'm just going to share my screen. Oop. So, okay. Pictures. You can all see? Yes. Perfect. Then I'm going to start. Um, as already mentioned, I'm Pia. I'm from group three, and we were all inspired by shoes. Um, so we already know a little bit about the problem, of course, we want to reduce the plastic waste, we want to support people in the global south, we already, of course, discussed this, and of course, we want to use the machines from Plasticpreneur that can transform uh, plastic waste into amazing new products. Um, one other really important uh, problem for us uh, concerns soil transmitted helminth infections. Um, these are very serious infections and currently 1.5 billion people are infected with those by those parasites and um, this data is by the World Health Organization and um, so those 1.5 billion people are actually 24 percent of the world's population and they are mostly people are affected in the sub -Saharan, in sub-saharan Africa the Americas China and East Asia so um, for my product, I was going to focus on Papua New Guinea, uh, to be more specific on Milne Bay. Um, this is an area consisting of small islands where small uh, close-knit communities live. And the big problem I noticed there was waste disposal. Um, so they ended up just burning all their plastic. Um, and what, else, what I also noticed is that most people spend the day walking through water, through sand and um, walking on rocks, which of course also is a big problem of their feet. Um, so most of them use flip-flops um, or no shoes at all, basically. They share them or carry them around basically all the time. Um, the uh, benefits of producing flip-flops for this project would be that we would serve a need of the community um, flip-flops could serve as a great barrier against soil transmitted diseases. Um, we can build a sustainable business model around them and we, they can be produced easily with the machines from Plasticpreneur. And for comfort, I would have suggested a model like this. So basically to have two parts um, so that the shoes are a little bit more flexible. Um, and what we still will need to work on is to find a specific business model that we can build around those flip-flops. Um, we also, of course, will still need to work on the technical um, stuff like precise measurements and how we will actually um, produce the strap of the flip-flops. Um, but that's basically it. So thanks for listening. Okay, that was an open appeal to the mentors to go ahead and fulfill some of those challenges <laughs> you have, Pio, isn't it? Thank you very of much. Course. Let's go ahead. 
Let's go ahead and move on to, thanks again. Let's go ahead and move on to group number four, which would be Fabian. Yes. Fabian, can you hear Michael, us? Michael, I'm yes. going to continue. The stage is Our yours, Fabian. Perfect. Um, if all of you can now see my screen, I would yeah, like could to... see it. Perfect. I would like to continue with our idea on how to see used plastic as an opportunity. Uh, let me first briefly explain how I came up with this idea. Basically, a few years ago, I was working and living in a rural community in Cambodia. And there, plastic consumption is extensive and waste disposal is really lacking. Apart from this environmental issue, there are many social issues. One major problem is the lacking sanitation. Let's stick to Cambodia, for instance, where 40% of the population do not have access to improved sanitation. Well, this also includes the possibility to properly wash hands. And therefore, I had the intention to use the plastic burner machine to tackle two challenges, the problem of plastic waste and the issue of lacking sanitation. And let's have a brief look at the solution that addresses both. First, an NGO is found as a business partner to sell the machine to. Second, the plasticpreneur machine is set up in a local community. There, it is supposed to provide an incentive for people to collect plastic waste at their homes or in their communities. This plastic waste is then processed to a simple hand washing device. This device should be constructed in a way that is easy to use and works without running water. Moreover, it should use a simple mechanism so that maintenance requirements are intentionally kept low. And finally, people can come with the plastic they collected and exchange it for the device. For this solution, the mission is to give plastic waste a value and at the same time provide uh, support to those who need it. During game days, it will be interesting to work on this solution, particularly in terms of technical feasibility and also to find a business model that might not rely on NGOs. Perfect, thanks a lot. Wow, thank you. I'm very impressed with all of these different ideas uh, and uh, this is gonna be one exciting 48 hours. Thanks again, Fabian. Let's go ahead and move on to group number five and that would be Tanya. Tanya, are you with us? I am. Let me just all right. set up my screen. Okay. We see it. Perfect. Oh, I don't. There we go. Hi there, everyone. Um, our team is going to be addressing problems regarding food insecurity, unemployment, and plastic waste. And we're planning to do that using food storage products. So to demonstrate the need for food security, I'd like to point you in the direction of this example of a vegetable farmer in South Africa. Now, she relies on selling her produce to traders that occasionally drive past her plot. But while she's sitting out there with her vegetables, they rot in the sun because they're lying out without protection. And she also doesn't earn a lot of money because she's unable to actually carry her produce all the way to the local farmer's market. Now, if we travel to the city for a moment, we can see that um, unemployment is a growing concern. And a lot of people who move from the rural farmlands to the city actually struggle with securing a job. Obviously with this increase in urbanization, plastic waste is an ongoing concern. And 1.2 million tons of recyclable plastic is actually dumped into landfills in South Africa every year. So we want to find a solution that will connect our, for example, smallholder farmer with our unemployed city dweller while still solving the problem of plastic waste. And we propose to do this by using storage boxes, which sounds deceivingly simple, but Storage solutions are incredibly effective to protect food from exposure from elements, to keep food fresh, and also to um, transport without damage. A potential business model that we could use would be to have a NGO a company purchase a machine from Plasticpreneur. City dwellers would be hired to collect plastic waste, and workers would be hired to create crates using these machines. And these machines would either be given and or sorry, these crates would be given or sold to farmers or whichever user to protect and transport their goods. And once these have reached the end of the useful life, they will be returned back to be recycled once more. Obviously, this example uses crates for storage, but I've also included pictures of lunch boxes. Our team has so many ideas for food storage solutions. And um, 
various molds can be used to tackle this problem and we will be integrating our solutions during these 48 hours. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. And I'm very impressed how all of you are ensuring that you keep the human being in the middle of all of your proposals. It's really exciting. Uh, thanks again. Let's go ahead and move on to group number six, and that would be Anna. Are, Anna, are you with us? Uh, yeah. Um, no good. One second. Sure. Yeah, uh, do you see the screen? Yeah, we have it. It's all yours, okay. Anna. Yeah, okay. So, uh, hello, I'm Anna from the team number six, and I'm excited to tell you about the solution to the Philippines with plastic printer. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, there are three major problems with the Philippines is facing. First one is the lack of funding for local schools due to the poverty. The second one is the fact that 7 million people are relying on unsafe contaminated water. And the third one is the fact that the Philippines is facing a plastic pollution crisis. So the solution for the Philippines is to use the excess plastic and recycle it to create a product similar to live straw. This straw is made out of the plastic and has a filter in it. With this straw, it is safe to drink the water available and it will clean the water while drinking through it. As mentioned before, the potential market size, at least 7 million people there. So um, how the business model would work? Plastic Preneur will educate children from local schools why recycling is important. Within the program, some of those children can decide to become social entrepreneurs and help in collecting and sorting plastic by type to create such stores for plastic with plastic printers machine. After that, they will insert the filter. Final product will be sold to local communities that will help them to improve their health. Children can get a small financial rewards for the job done as an incentive, around 20% of the final product price, and 80% of the final product price will go to the schools to buy educational materials for children. To sum up, first, improving education at schools will create a long-lasting impact on the Philippines economy and increase chances to eradicate poverty. Second, the product itself will be used locally and solve the problem of unclean drinking water, improving the life of local communities. So with one solution, plastic printer can help to improve education at schools, the economic situations and the health of the locals in the Philippines. Thank you. All right, Anna, thank you. It was an excellent presentation. Let's go ahead and move on to group number seven, and that would be Dominic. Dominic, are you with us? It's going to be Jonas, actually. Oh, it's going to be oh I apologize, Jonas. Then I leave you the stage. No and I promise not to ever call you Dominic again. Okay. <laughs> so. and you, Can you see my there. screen? Yeah, we got it. So hey, everyone. My name is Jonas. And on behalf of my group, I would like to present you my idea, which can possibly create new hope for Cambodia's landmine victims. To start off, here are some facts about the target market. Despite efforts undertaken by the government to change that, Cambodia is still a developing country. Over 13% of its population live in poverty. Strikingly, 90% of them live on the countryside. However, poverty is not Cambodia's only problem. Sadly, the country is one of the most mined areas in the world. In a country that has only 11.5 million inhabitants, four to six million mines are buried in fields and remote areas, mainly in the northwest of Cambodia, so the areas where 90% of the poorest people live. From 1979 until late 2019, reports say that sadly over 19,000 people have died after stepping onto a landmine. Those lucky enough to survive have often suffered severe injuries and lost limbs, resulting in over 40,000 people living in Cambodia's amphibies. Sorry, I have no idea why the slides keep changing. Um, their lives are unfortunately not easy. Because of their low income and rural placement, Amputees often, do, often don't have access to prosthesis, proper crutches, or a wheelchair. What is more, due to the um, resulting low mobility or no mobility at all, landmine victims often do not have a possibility to pursue a proper profession. Ultimately, this often results in amputees having to live in extreme poverty and relying on begging in order to earn enough money to survive. So the good news are that I found a solution that can possibly increase the living conditions for amputees. Lightweight crutches made from recycled plastic that can be produced by plasticpreneur machinery locally are a great opportunity. Plasticpreneur can cooperate with NGOs 
who then supply communities with the needed equipment to produce the crutches. Since the crutches are made from recyclable plastic, they are almost free of cost and carry the benefit of reducing Cambodia's waste mountain for good. On top of that, through a screwing mechanism with which the parts are put together, the head of the crutches can be manually adjusted. With the lightweight crutches for plasticpreneur, amputees are more mobile and have an opportunity to get a proper job. This ultimately results in them having the possibility to earn enough to survive. That's it for now from my side. Thank you, listening. Another great example, Jonas, of putting the, per the, the human being in the middle. Thank you very much for that. Let's go ahead and move on to group number eight, and that would be Plamen. Are you with us? I see the screen moving, so I am taking that as an affirmative. The stage is yours, and we see your presentation. But you're on mute. Plumman, I'm afraid you are still on mute. Do you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, thank you, Søren, um, for that piece of advice. That's okay. We understand that we had the power all along to unmute you. Okay, I'm sorry. Something happened to my computer. So you hear Not me Not a now? problem. Don't worry, okay. you still get your two minutes. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about keeping it up much. No, not so, a worries. Go ahead, Plyman. So All yours. Hello, uh, my name is Plyman, and I would like to suggest a possible solution to the you know, day's challenge. I chose Cambodia as the country in which I would like to launch my product due to the following problems. Firstly, the environmental problem. Uh, since Cambodia's accession to ASEAN, plastic products of all kinds have poured into the country. Cambodia themselves use around 10 million plastic bags every day the capital city of Phnom Penh. The Mekong River uh, is one of the top 10 rivers which transport around 90% of the global load into the ocean. Another problem I would like to tackle is the lack of countrywide education for people with visual disabilities. There are only five government maintained schools that teach Khmer Brayu and they're owned by the government since only four years. And there are around 40,000 people that are completely blind and around 50,000 additional people have severe visual impairments. So what would be the solution? A Braille writing slate made of recycled plastic, of course, entirely from the machines offered by the plastic preneurs. So how would it work? Waste pickers could be the main source of the plastics as there are around 2,000 collecting garbage in Phnom Penh. Main buyers, would be NGOs, the government, and on the free market, where people who have graduated from these specialized schools would be uh, needing them for the later stages of their lives. So what would be the result? A cheap writing braille slate that could help the visual disabled Cambodians be an important part of the modern Darren society. So thank you very much. Oh, yes. Thank, thank you very much, Plamen. That was very good. And apologies for the, the complications from our end as well. I'd like to go ahead and move on to group number 10, and that would be Faud. Are you with us? So I'll be presenting our um, The stage is yours. Does this work? We see it. It's all yours. One second. Okay. So, hello. So, I'm Fuad. I'll be presenting Group 10's idea for the Inno Days. And then welcome to the idea for this year's Inno Days. I present you sustainable board games. Main problems that we are tackling are high unemployment rates, huge amounts of plastic waste and pollution, and the lack of local community engagement. The concept behind our idea is simple. We utilize the available machinery that Plasticpreneur provides to produce board game pieces, such as the ones used in classical James games such as Jenga. By doing into fun games that are shared between people, non-personal use as a thoughtful gifting idea. It's designed for maximum reach. Our product, using minimal space from the 
afforded by the malls. The pieces needed for such board games, including Tokyo Highway, Animal Upon Animal, and Catch the Moon. We also have many other possibilities to use the machine create iconic games. So the potential of our idea, the use of the current global modes. As an end product, it instills a sense of sustainability in playtime, and it is a chance to educate kids about plastic recycling. We are offering communities the chance to entertain themselves and provide something with uh, here are our potential personas that we were going to be targeting. We thought of uh, the working mom who has active kids at, to keep them entertained during playtime and as well as educated. Thank you and happy playtime. Okay, well, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and move on to group number 11, and that would be Lai. Yeah. Um, I cannot share. Should... Can you see my screen? No. Not yet. No. It looks like it's happening. Yes, we're getting closer. We see the ocean. See here? Yeah, we see team number 11. Yes. Okay. Thanks. And I so think you want to go to team, slide number two? No? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not here. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm from Team 11, and thank you for listening to my idea for the Inno Days and have fun with plastic. So I chose Indonesia as a target country. Its beautiful landscape attracted over 60 million tourists last year. The local government strongly support tourism industry, aiming to gain 8% of GDP from it. Indonesia has high population, but over 20% live in poverty. So poverty results in a lack of education. Only 12% of young people can go to university, which leads to a high rate of youth unemployment. Besides, Indonesia has a, high, has a huge problem with plastic pollution. Every year, 1.3 million tons of waste end up in the ocean. So how we can combine the well-developed tourism industry with these two problems? The answer I found is, with this machine from Plastic Pronor. So let me explain it in more detail. Water sports is the most popular activity in Indonesia and the paddles is highly demanded. Paddles can be made from plastic and it is even lighter. With our machine, a young entrepreneur can cut the plastic into small pieces and use the paddle model to make a new one. They can easily design the color, the size and the form, collect the broken one and recycle again. The paddles has a wide range of use such as for kayak, stand up pedal, uh, boarding, uh, rafting, and even for the local protein market. So in this business, business model, I include government support to enable the young entrepreneur to get the initial capital. They can distribute their product directly to the local travel agents and stores. Because the raw material costs not much, the price can be also set lower. By this way, Indonesia can benefit in employment, environment, tourism, and the whole economy. Here at least some needed support for the business model and the feasibility test. Also a question related to the COVID-19 and the possible solution for the current situation. So thank you for your attention. Excellent, Lai, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and move on to group number 12, which would be Frederica. Are you with us? Yes. I'm with you. Hi. Excellent. And I quickly want to. Yeah, we're getting there. We see the screen. Yes, okay. Vietnam helmets. Perfect. It's still loading at my place. Yeah, here we go. So, we hello. My name is Federica. I'm from Team 12, and I quickly want to present our starting idea. So, Vietnam, a beautiful country with two major issues. One, according to scientists, 6% of the worldwide plastic trash comes from Vietnam. If nothing is done, by 2050, there will be more plastic trash in the ocean than fish. In addition to this, the roads in Vietnam are ranked as one of the world's most dangerous ones in the world. And the worst about this, less than half of the children nationwide wear helmets. So it comes to no surprise that 2,000 children are yearly dying in traffic accidents. 
So here's the problem. At the one side, we have tons of plastic waste and at the other, we have thousands of injured kids. And here's my solution. With the great machines from Plastic Greener, we can tackle both issues at the same time by producing protecting helmets. But how can we make a viable business model and a social impact out of that? First of all, we need someone in the country who owns the machines. In this case, Ms. Saigon. Secondly, we need a supplier for the raw material people who want to earn some money. And last but not least, we need someone who's actually buying our products. So by offering money for the needed input, people with low income will collect the trash, sell it to Miss Saigon. Miss Saigon is then able to produce our product, the helmets. And then due to the fact that Vietnam is counting to the middle income countries, there's a huge customer segment available with money willing to spend. So with this idea, I hope in future the roads in Vietnam will be filled with helms and no trash and the kids are just fooling around and smiling. Um, and in order to realize our idea, we think that the most needed support for us will be the technical aspects like how to produce a safe helmet that's actually protecting the kid's head. So thank you very much. Another, again, another clear call to action to our mentors to go ahead and head, help Frederica out with the technical challenges and um, another great example of the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. Thank you very much, Frederica. Let's go ahead and move on to group number 13, and that would be Hannah. Hello. Hannah, are you All right. Just try to share my screen. Okay. We got her. Great. Uh, and now you can also see me. Even better. So hello and welcome to my idea bit. Since many houses in several Southeast Asian countries are built with cheap and unstable materials, they are particularly affected by natural disasters like earthquakes. So for example, in 2018 in Indonesia, there were around 11,000 earthquakes. And as you can see here, or not, to sometimes lead to the partial um, destruction of buildings, leaving people shelterless and without perspectives. On the other hand, these countries also suffer from enormous plastic waste disposals. The plastic pollution in Asian Pacific region alone costs $1.3 billion per year. But this should be seen as an opportunity. Since both are two major problems, I come up with the idea to solve both with one single solution by building houses out of plastic. So the main advantage is that plastic is an inexpensive raw material and would be more resistant to earth vibrations. And thereby, plastic can be used in a sustainable way to improve the living conditions of many people. This could be conducted by applying the following steps. At first, local people themselves should become active and collect plastic. The collected plastic is then sorted, stored, and further processed. The plastic printer's machines are bought by a local company or the state and rented to the house builders for little money. Um, then the machines are delivered directly to the places where the houses is to build and finally the whole construction process is carried out in one spot. The collected plastic is used to produce bricks and dolls, which are then put together similar to a modular system. And actually this could be seen on the slides if it would work. But mm -hmm. the system is very flexible and um, the houses can be extended anytime. So in order to create cultural acceptance. The plastic bricks are only the basic frameworks and um, the facades are further crowded with clays and branches. So it matched the traditional construction method. And in order to implement this innovative idea, um, my team and me, would, we would need technical support so we can focus on business management and marketing. And so together we can make the world a place and please support me and I'm looking forward to the upcoming next days. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Hannah. And uh, another call to action for some technical mentors. Let's go ahead and move on to group number 14, and that would be Janine. Hi, yes, I will just share my screen. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So hi, everyone. I am Shanine and um, I'm in group 14 and our topic is sanitation systems. So just a quick reminder to our challenge. We were asked to 
um, yeah, come up with a solution on how we design useful products and viable business models from used plastic resources. And obviously plastic waste is um, a global problem, but I wanted to focus my idea on one country in particular, which is Ethiopia. Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries in the world. And in the last 30 years, its population grew from 30 million to nearly 100 million inhabitants. And with the increase in population, also the plastic waste increased. Not only does the country not know on how to deal with its own waste, but also other countries in the world ship their plastic waste in, into the country illegally. And Ethiopia, Ethiopia's waste disposal is mostly done by the rain, which means that people just dump their garbage um, next to a river and then hope that the flood will wash it away. Moreover, people suffer from infectious diseases because of the poor hygienic situation in the country. And unfortunately, 73.2% of the Ethiopian population has no access to sanitary infrastructure. To tackle these problems, the solution that I came up with is creating pipes and connectors with plastic printers um, machines to install more sanitary systems. With plastic printers um, machines, um, first of all, with the extruder, the pipes could be produced. And with the injection machines, the connectors could be pressed into shape. And with that, a complete plug-in system for a sanitary system could be installed. So with this business model, the plastic waste in Ethiopia could be reduced and re reused as a new resource. Then the sanitary systems could be installed also in rural areas in the country. And of course, jobs could be created through the pipe and connector production and, sanitary and through the sanitary installations. So thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Janine. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to group number 15, which would be Valerie. Um, everyone see and hear me well? We see you and we hear you. <laughs> Right. Hi, everyone. I'm representing Team 15, and we are working on the concept of sustainable construction. So our idea is pretty straightforward, and I'll illustrate with a simple experiment that some of you guys might be familiar with. So I have with me a popsicle stick, and well, it's not very useful, neither is it very durable. So if I apply a little bit more pressure, oops, it will snap. But what if, uh, what if you take a bunch of them, and construct something out of it. So I did some simple craft just now. And as you can see over here, well, um, I made a wooden truss and it can we hold the weight. And as I apply some pressure, yeah, it still feels fairly stable, <laughs> right? So now I'll share my screen. Okay. Yeah, so that makes us wonder if a few pieces of wood sticks can already make such a stable structure, um, how much more would a st structure made out of plastic be? And our team's inspiration is made out of um, a mix of both Western and Eastern worlds. So from the creative world of Lego bricks that have sparked like imagination from the young to the old, to the ancient Japanese wood working technique that you know, is able to hold buildings without nails. And that leads us to the three building blocks of our concept. That is building something that's modular, flexible, and durable. And this brings immense benefits um, to our project. So firstly, we are not restricted to the size of what plastic premier technology can make uh, because we can, you know, we can fix and construct them into a bigger structure. And we can also um, economy to the space considerations. So especially in communities where, you know, the houses may be small, so we are able to, to accommodate that. And lastly, we can be creative and with the solution and, you know, maximize the value of the metal mold that we create with plastic pioneer technology. So, one of the challenges that my team is interested to look at is the challenge around infrastructure. So 
we are thinking how we can, you know, make plastic um, to enhance the stability of the housing and in an affordable way for local communities. And one of the areas that we have um, identified is Vietnam as a starting point where two thirds of the population live in rural community and more than 50% of Vietnam, 95 million people and less than $5.50 per day. So more around that and over the next 48 hours, our team will be validating this concept. So stay tuned. Alrighty, Valerie, thanks a million. Let's go ahead and move on to group number 16 and that would be Constanze. No, I'm Constanze and okay. I would like to share my screen, but I think Valerie, you first have to uh, stop sharing it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, all good. <laughs> all right. So. We're looking good. Constanze, we can see your screen. Perfect. So, well, I'm Constanze, I'm from Team 16, and we are uh, working on water constructions, and we're going to use my idea as a basis from which we're going to work on. So, um, I'm going to start. <laughs> so, did you know that 243 um, trillion tiny raindrops fall down every year on the Philippines? So, this is actually a very huge amount of rain, um, as in Germany, for instance, it's only a seven. Due to the heavy rains, uh, the Filipinos are often confronted with flooding. So locals lose their homes and their belongings. And a big problem in this regard is trash, especially plastic trash, which blocks local drainages, preventing the flood water to flow. The Filipinos are also confronted with water service interruptions. Sometimes they even lack sufficient water for basic hygiene, like washing themselves. Due to, to the poor education, the Philippines are also dealing with unemployment. And those are actually quite a lot of challenges and the government is already trying to solve them. However, they are struggling. So I was wondering what can the individual do against all these issues? So let's try to tackle the first pro problem, the plastic waste. So in the Philippines, there are actually uh, already a lot of cleanups However, those organi organizations most of the time do not know what to do with the collected waste in a meaningful way. And this is where Plasticpreneur comes into play. So Plasticpreneur provides those organizations with machines that turn the plastic waste into useful products. Useful products and that solve the second problem, the water management, are gutters and pipes. Currently, less than 10% of the rain is used on the Philippines. However, water is a very yeah, valuable resource and can be used for taking a shower, washing clothes, cleaning, and so on. And by implementing this business model, the third challenge, the unemployment will be tackled. So locals can start collect collecting plastic waste and either they get directly paid for it or they can exchange it with pipes and gutters. What will start with the help of organizations can transform to little businesses where locals themselves produce gathers with the machines. Moreover, gathers are not just uh, of high interest for the locals. So for some years now, eco hostels are on the rise. They also will be interested in use it, using recycled gathers to provide their guests with fresh water directly from the sky. Yeah, that is actually our idea from which we're gonna work on further. Excellent. All right, Constanza, thank you very much. Then I would say we move on to group number 17, and that would be Anna. Anna, yeah. are you with us? All yeah. right, good. Can and you we have your screen. screen? Yes, yeah. we got her. Perfect. So my name is Anne, and I'm also from BU Vienna. And as I focused on Sub-Saharan Africa, I want to give you some background numbers on the region before actually introducing my idea. In total, more than 1 billion people live in countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. 60% of them live in rural parts and only 22.6% of the, this group has access to electricity. Moreover, many countries are facing challenges as the amount of plastic waste is increasing and often not recycled. Okay. Yeah. Um, to address these issues, I created a wind wheel generator kit, which can be produced with the help of the plasticpreneur machines. 
the production process would look as usual and small scale wind wheels would be the result. They could look similar to the ones you can see here on the right. In areas with enough wind, for example, close to the coastline, several of these wind wheels could be placed next to the house or on the roof and connected to a generator. This way the, ha the houses could be equipped with electricity and light. Um, let's look at the target group next. The wind wheel generator kit would help individual households and families as light, for example, makes it possible for kids to study even when it's already dark outside. Also small scale farmers, local businesses and community facilities like schools could profit from their own electricity source to power small machinery or helpful electronic devices. So what are the main benefits? First of all, it is an easy to use and flexible system as a variable number of wind wheels can be installed. It makes use of free resources, plastic and wind. Families and small business are supported by giving them an opportunity to produce their own off-grid electricity and that way also save money. Moreover, wind energy is a sustainable source of electricity. Therefore, it is also a great opportunity to educate local communities, businesses and schools about sustainability topics, including plastic recycling and clean energy. And I suppose that um, we'll probably need most uh, support regarding technical aspects. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Anna. Then let's go ahead and move on to group number 18, and that would be Supin. Yes. Uh, I cannot start sharing now for a second. Oh, yeah, no. So can everybody see? Uh, yes, we can, Subin. Okay. So um, welcome to our idea pitch. I'm Subin. We're actually team 18. And our idea is about self-watering planter pots made of plastic waste. The challenge we are facing during InnoDays event is how we can turn plastic waste into a valuable product, which will make a major contribution towards a circular economy. First of all, we did some research on gardening market. The garden market is Germany had a, had a sales volume of 18.7 billion euros last year in 2019. There, there's a growing interest in green living surrounding, which translate to higher interest in indoor plants and pots and planters. And it's, this, mark, this gardening market is expected to grow continuously. And 53%, the largest part of the sales is generated by the flowers or plants for inside and outside. Indoor plants are, plant sales are booming as a result of urbanization, interior design trends, and Instagram influencers. This is the DIY set watering planter using pet bottles, which you can make um, easily at home. Um, this set watering planter can save water and time and even plants for those who don't know how to look after the plants. But on the other side, it has poor design and it, it, it has like a limited sizes for bigger plants. So the process will be like this. We gather the, or the um, plastic waste first and then we produce the step watering um, plant up pots using the machines, um, which will be provided by um, Plastic Preno. Um, this um, self watering planter pots not only can save the water, time, and even plants, but also the uh, unique with the unique design in various sizes, um, even ecological value for the plant lovers. So, which will meet um, customers' needs out there. So, hopefully, we can be part of the contribution for keeping our earth green through this Inode Circular Economy project. Thank you. Thank you, Subin. Thank you very much for that presentation. Yes, if we can go ahead and move on to group number 19, and that would be Verena. Verena, are you with us? Yes, hi. Hi. The stage is all yours. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, hi, everyone. We are Silvana, Andrea, Freya, Jan-Lukas, Vladislav and me, Verena. 
And we are really looking forward to share our idea with you today. Um, so when we thought about the name plasticpreneur, we thought about the words plastic and preneur and what was the connection between them. Um, the connection is a fantastic startup which make the world better. And what we can do to make the world better? Thinking of sustainability, of recycling the amount of plastic waste, for example, in Indonesia. Support communities around the world and bring joy to everyone. By combining all these factors together, we want to create a new and useful product from used plastic resources, a picture frame called ClickPick. The idea? Creating a simple picture frame by clicking four frame pieces together. It is in three sizes available. Each of them can be in a different color so that you can put your own unique click pick together. The bag is also available in three sizes and uses the click system to stick to the frames. Our goal, pictures for everyone. Children putting together colorful frames fill them with their hand-painted pictures and giving them to their parents as a gift. People who are interested in sustainability would love to put their favorite prints in recycled frames up on the wall. They are unique, long-lasting, and the most important aspect, they celebrate memories and connect people all over the world. So let's sum up. Cherish those special memories alive with ClickPick. Fill your rooms with life and find a way to inspire more creativity and make someone happy. Thank you. Excellent, Verena, thank you very much. And I'd like to go ahead and uh, agree with Soren's comment. It's been extremely inspiring. All the presentations that we've seen so far and it just keeps on coming. Thank you very much, Verena. Let's go ahead and move on to group number 20 and that would be Daniela. Yes, hello. Hi. Hello. I could to share my screen, I hope it works. Can you see the slide? Not yet. Okay. Oh, it's looking good. Yep, we got it. Perfect. So my name is Daniela and I am presenting the idea from our Team 20 will work on. And so as all of you know, plastic waste is increasing in the whole world, but the main producers are in Asia and in Africa. So I personally decided to focus on Africa. And this was also based on the reason that I thought about education. And education, for me especially, is one of the most important goods out there. Um, but in Africa, the problem is um, lots of goods are not available, like, for example, writing pads or also furniture uh, as tables. And so my solution for the whole problem is to develop modular plastic furniture. And this would eliminate the need for experts and donations from other countries and as well allow the people to, to use the available resources and to use them in a cost-effective way. Um, and uh, yeah, now I will explain you what I mean with modular furniture. So um, the parts are produced individually, so it would also be possible with the plastic machine, and then they are connected with each other. For example, you could use small solid plastic cubes and or just design um, furniture that fits perfectly in each other. And I've also prepared a video to show it because I wasn't sure if my webcam is good enough. Uh, I hope it works good for you. So here you can see the table and on the bottom of it there are tubes made to hold the table legs. And the plate could consist of one piece or four pieces. And in the next step I will show you how uh, it works with the small solid tube. So it's the wood one and I put it in the leg and then the table leg is yeah placed into the tube on the bottom of the table and that's basically it and with this kind of system you could produce tables chairs and more kind of furniture so it offers lots of ways to do furniture and so I think it can really work and it shows many possibilities. And I'm also glad that five people in my team see it in a similar way. So I'm looking forward to working further on this project. And based on the support we need, I think it's um, mostly technical support, but also on the business model, but yeah, we will see how it develops. So thank you. 
Okay, Daniela, thank you. And that's another call to action to our mentors. Thank you, Daniela. Let's move on to group number 21, and that would be Georg. Georg, yes. are you with us? Hi. Excellent. So you can see my screen? Not yet, but it looks like we're getting close. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let me introduce you to the all-in-one working tool for Indonesia. And first, I want to start with the problems at the local market. So Indonesia faces some major problems. The country produces more than 24,000 tons of plastic waste every day. And it's the second largest contributor to plastic pollutants in the oceans. And what is more, one fifth of the population are vulnerable of falling into poverty. So that is why many people cannot afford good working tools and often literally working with their hands. And at this point, my idea um, begins with the all-in-one working tool. So it consists of two parts, a handle and different heads. So you can tra transform it to every working tool you, you'd like to. And the handle consists of a thread to easily change the different heads and a special brand mark to clearly identify that it's our working tool. And in order to make this product successful and not ending up as waste in nature again, I created a circular business model. And first people collect plastic waste and they're getting paid per kilogram. Then together with the machines of Plasticpreneur, we can produce the working tool and the product, uh, the product is going to be sold either directly at a, major, at a manufacturing place or at local shops. And the price will include a small deposit and people get the deposit back when they return their used or broken tool. And then we have a closed loop. So I conducted interviews for the success drivers and the basic outcome was the product is feasible as long as it's affordable and durable. And moreover, we have to face the problem that people have to accept the product as a plastic working tool and have to have to accept it that it's um, made out of plastic. And we have to raise awareness of problems due to plastic waste. And of course, we need some support from the mentors um, in order to realize the product um, technically and to get contacts to target customers. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much. All right, great. Uh, Georg, thank you very much. Let's move on to group number 22, and that would be Di Diana. Hello, my name is Diana, and I'm from Team 22, and I would like to present our idea about art. So art surrounds life, all people in, in every location, and it is a huge part of our culture that shapes our ideas and brings us a better understanding of self-awareness and emotions. Art in any forms can give people the emotions that can lift up their spirits and make them more driven than ever. So one of the common trends in the tourism industry, for example, is hospitality art, which utilizes art objects in order to engage more customers and more guests throughout their stay. So, and corporate art is also inspires workers and boost productivity using art objects inside the workplaces. So art in interior design um, introduces people to beauty and relaxation and the interest of people in having a nice and attractive interior design is increasing. Many of us are really interested in stylish interior design in art decorations and many of us are really concerned about the environmental issues with the plastic waste in the world. So how about combining these two spheres and giving the second life to plastics by creating sustainable art and sustainable interior design to use plastics for decorations, art objects, and uh, amazing masterpieces and approaches to bring together the people with the different backgrounds, interior designers, designers, software and mechanical engineers to produce amazing masterpieces and art objects and to transform the uh, Ordinary, ordinary looking play, place into the place which is more aesthetically modern, stylish, and beautiful. So the plastic can be the source for that because it can replace other expensive materials and can be durable, stable, and humidity resistant. So plastic is fantastic and let's create sustainable art together. Excellent. The, the, Diana, thank you very much. And let's move on to group number 23, which would be Anastasia. Yep, hello. Um, 
I'm going to share the screen. Just a second. So can you hear it? Can you We're see? looking good. Yes. Yep. OK, amazing. So uh, yeah. So uh, hello, everyone, one more time. My name is Anastasia, and I'm from Vienna University of Economics and Business, and I'm a representative of, of Team 23. So I'm going to present you my idea of what can be produced with the use of small-scale recycling machines and who can be like interested in the production. So um, the realization takes place in Uzbekistan. It's a Central Asian country with popularity of uh, 33.9 million people and an employment rate of people from 16 to 30 is 16. So around 1.4 million people are unemployed. And another thing is that 30% of the population, uh, which is around 10 million people, are currently, currently younger than working age. And that can create even more issues with the youth unemployment in the country in the next several years. So and also another problem is uh, recycling situation in the country because currently there is only one garbage sorting station and um, there are private companies which collect plastic for recycling uh, but they collect mostly plastic bottles and also people don't separate garbage and much a part of the used plastic is just thrown away so uh, there is more and more plastic with every year that come from other countries also with the imported items a third issue is uh, your entrepreneurs and small businesses which can and uh, want to produce something and I mean they won't produce their own product but they can't afford an expensive equipment uh, which also requires much space and investments and at the same time for example when they need to produce a small amount of items um, it makes it impossible to get exactly what they want working with um, manufacturers so um, in that case, the small scale recycling machines would help in solving the, all three issues. So it would make it easier for small companies to produce items, uh, which can positively influence the amount of working places and the recycling situation in the country. So, and the main products uh, that I can say that can be produced are like items for home and decoration, such as uh, creative items for home, um, and also uh, bu building items, such as, for example, sailing panels. So um, there is a potential in the field because like market here is not really situated. And also like in that case, the price would be probably lower than like if you buy like not recycled products and it will be also like attractive for uh, people, especially in, especially in rural areas where the level of income, of income is much lower. So, um, uh, but I really need people to help me from the uh, technical part and from the part of design, how it can look like, how the products can look like. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention. No, thank you very much, Anastasia. Let's go ahead and move on to group number 24. And that would be uh, Dranitya. Yeah, do you hear me? Yes, we see you. Okay, thank you, I will share screen. We Good see evening, something. everyone. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. I'm Lita from Team 24. Um, right now, I will present about um, supporting plastic pollutions. Um, our idea is about plastic hub, so we want to support um, plastic pollution areas. Actually, they start from the background that we know each other about million of ton of waste um, in the world ocean each year, and we also know that. Uh, actually, this is in Indonesia and in Jakarta. Every day is more 7,400 ton of waste in Jakarta. And we know that in waste pickers in Indonesia, actually in Jakarta, they are very play a critical role. They live in the sadness um, areas and very extreme. And so this is our solution. So we want to uh, have innovation um, we are aims to elevate and establish the effective and responsible local waste collections. 
through circular economy and technology approach. So how we work, um, so we have several of uh, our services. The first one is consult. Consult is about the providing best practice between the customer and also waste picker who want to collect their plastic waste. And then create, we want to create a platform so everyone want to collect their plastic, uh, they can co uh, connect with us and also empowers because uh, waste pickers or scavenger is very related with our um, waste management system and also solve because we want to um, provide them the, the good life and also the good um, uh, household and everything. So this is uh, uh, one of the platform that we want to improve and also develop. So actually this is in Bahasa, so I will translate into English. So we will sell all the products from plastic waste and then Besides that, we also provide services and then we also provide visit. So everyone wants to visit the waste pickers um, community. So we will uh, engage them and also donate. So uh, this is um, plastic hub, how to work. So the first one is customers. So customers who bring their plastic waste, they can connect with our platform, uh, like website or something. And then uh, we work with the plastic cleaners to make the new one, new things from the plastic um, waste. So we are very um, need help from the plastic planners and also everyone for more than about technical aspect. Thank you. Okay, Ranita, thank you very much. And then we move on to our last group for today, and that would be group number 25, and that would be Peter, Jesse. Are you with thank us? Thank you. Yes, I okay. am. Great. Can you see the screen? Uh, we see SAP. Okay, perfect. Now we see it. Okay, so one second. So thank you, Michael, and hi, everybody. My name is Peter, and I'm talking to you from Berlin. And our um, plastic printer idea is going to be focused on Indonesia, which has, of course, beautiful nature, but also a dramatic plastic problem generating 175,000 tons of waste on a daily basis, out of which 14% is plastic. 81% of that waste is unsorted, which makes it super difficult to recycle and causing plastic waste to end up in landfills or leaking through rivers like Citerum into the ocean instead. But luckily, there are many amazing organizations, initiatives and communities in place to tackle that problem. And I had the chance to interview some of them already. They all agreed that it makes most sense to establish decentralized local productions in the smaller islands on the east part of Indonesia because there's often no recycling and no proper waste management in place. So um, why not creating and producing trash bins? This would not only support the collection of trash in public areas, offices or schools, but also help to sort the plastic and at the same time create awareness. To use as little plastic input as possible, the bins need to be created a bit differently out of three different parts. All of them can be created out of the current plastic machines. So these are rings, bars, and of course a lid. The rings consist of four different parts which can be plugged together. Four or eight bars stabilize, stabilize these rings. And the lid also consists of four different parts that can be put together. By mixing in pigments, it's also possible to color the bins and allow different sorts of trash bins. Plastic printers are already in contact with wild plastic and can use their bags made out of 100% wild plastic. Of course, a local partner is needed on, the, uh, on site as an intermediary, so the target groups will be nonprofit organizations, which you, you see here the scenario one, which is that the organization is able to afford the machines themselves directly from plastic printers. Option two is that it requests funding from the local government as Indonesia's ministries are putting a lot of budget on the islands in order to equip them, um, the, the local collection centers um, with stuff. Um, and they will most likely collaborate. If that doesn't work, there's also a number of large corporations that are willing to provide sponsorships and in return receive a CSR story that shows they take action to stop plastic pollution. So the bins can be uh, so the machines can be put into operation in a local trash center and local communities can be involved at an early stage to support the production, maybe take over at some point and maybe start their own business. And actions with schools should also be planned to raise more local awareness about the plastic pollution at an early stage. And yeah, the, the bins can be sold to local companies, individuals um, on, a day, uh, on a donation basis. So where we need most support with will be the framework of how the local stakeholders are interacting. 
uh, validating the technical feasibility, like where are the limitations of the molds and the business model, the cost structure, revenue streams, and fine tuning the exact use cases. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Excellent. And we have completed the last of our 25 groups participating within our second virtual hackathon. So thank you very much. And without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and hand over the stage to Mate, who will be talking about the agenda and start to work. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I think I know most of you, um, one of the co-organizers, and I will keep uh, this very tight since I know we are already a bit over time and you can't wait to start working. So many of you or all of you should have already received the link to Sprintbase, which is the collaboration tool that we're gonna use during the Inno days. So in Sprintbase, um, you will see that your new workspaces are organized in three different steps. So we add the step ideate, prototype, and validate. And these three steps correspond to the three days of the Inno days. So within each of these steps, you will have some very, very small tasks that you will have to complete on each of the day. In Springbase, you also find your team and you will see that it's composed by your team members and by three other people. Two of them, it's me and Thomas, and then you have one uh, with your lead mentor. So in this case, for instance, uh, we have Michael Boyle, Mike, for friends, that uh, you already know, and he's gonna be the lead mentor of this team. So he also shows up as a team leader. So we are gonna sort of oversee that um, you're working, you have no question, and the workspace is filling up. So on Springbase, you have two tabs. Uh, that you have already seen in the phase of the inspiration. One provides guidance on what is required on each of the steps. And then you have a second space that is the workspace. Now we are seeing the guidance for step one, and we will go back to that uh, later on. So today you will develop a persona and a value ad lib for your ideas, and you find instructions on how you are supposed to do that, and also some uh, additional documents on the right side that you can download to help you complete the tasks. So in your workspace, um, it's like a very big whiteboard as you have already seen, and you can add different things. So um, here the step is not open, so it doesn't show up, but you will have the same add button that you found when you submitted your idea pitches, but with more um, things that you can add. So not just videos, but also sometimes templates or documents or um, different colors, lab labels, and so on. So if you go back, uh, Thomas, to the previous slide, um, in the workspace, you will also see these gray labels. Um, one of those says, add your persona here. The second one said, add your, your value ad lib here. So these instruction labels tells you where you are supposed to upload the documents that you have to uh, submit for each of the tasks. So it's very straightforward. Um, at the next slide, uh, we can also see that on Sprint Base, you have a timetable with some deadlines. To make it easy, we have as a deadline, uh, midnight of tonight for day one, midnight of tomorrow for day two, and then 2.30, which is half an hour before the closing, for uh, day three. Um, if for any reason you're faster or slower than the deadline that we have provided for these tasks, your team leaders, which are either Thomas and I or your lead mentor or the team leader of your team, will also have the power to advance to the next step by clicking the button that you see on the screen or to go back to the previous step at the next slide. Yeah, by clicking reopen step. So if no one, uh, like if you feel that your team leader might not be available all the time, because for instance, he's in a different time zone, you can also contact us and we can give team leader permission to multiple people in your teams so that you don't, will not have the problem of getting stuck and you want to go back to another step or you want to advance, but your team leader is not around and we are not around either. 
So keep that in mind. If more of you want to be team leaders on Sprint based, it doesn't change a lot. You, you will just have this additional capability to move between different steps. So just let us know. Um, yeah, if maybe we can go back uh, to the workspace, Thomas, that we saw before with the value at lib at the persona. Um, as I mentioned before, today you have these two very small tasks. So uh, the first one is to develop a persona, which is, uh, I think most of you are uh, familiar with that since you're doing it in your courses. So the persona is the target customer of your idea. And to um, fill, uh, to show us where your persona is, you can also fill a template. And that's the one that you find on the right, or also you can download it in the workspace by uh, clicking on add persona. So you will have a template. And I will post some uh, screenshots as well on Slack. Then you have the value ad lib, which is very, very quick to complete. And it's just the value proposition that you plan to offer to your persona uh, with your idea. So don't worry, it's very two very little tasks for today. So mind that um, by the end of the Inno days, you will have to complete two different things. One is a pitch deck, which is a summary of your idea. And the second one is a pitch video, which is again a two minutes video that explain your team idea at this stage. So it might happen that uh, you will make some changes to your persona, to your value proposition by the time the 48 hours end. So you don't have to worry to go back in sprint base and to change your value proposition if after one day of working together, it changes slightly. Just make sure that when you submit the pitch deck in the end, you have updated it with the final one because that's the main document that the plastic preneur uh, people are going to see and evaluate to select the winners. So um, just another two other minor announcement. So one is that um, most of you are part of teams, but some of you also sign up as supporting team members. So supporting team members are as people who are interested to support some of the teams, but are not available all the time. So I sent an email to uh, these guys to let me know which teams they are interested to support. And what I will do is that I will add um, who supporting team members to the Slack channels of each team so that they can introduce themselves and say when they're available and what they can, uh, in which way they can support each team. So if you are supporting team members and you did not answer to my email yet, please look through the different ideas to the different teams and let me know uh, who you are interested to support so that I can make the connection. So um, next steps. So as I mentioned before, uh, get to work. So you have to complete this persona and the value proposition on Sprint Base. Then we will have an update meeting with your lead mentors at seven. And we will see in a while um, where you find the link to the Zoom rooms of your lead mentors. And then um, if you realize that you don't have a team and you sign up as a full team member, please reach out as soon as possible to me so that I can find the team for you. And then very, very important, don't miss morning and evening updates because that's where you get the information and where you can also get some more feedback um, from your lead mentors. So um, here you see the rooms where you will meet your lead mentors. We will also post, it, uh, post them in the general announcement section on Slack and um, just keep the general announcement um, section um, on site since it's quite important. We publish, we post them, all the relevant information changes in the schedule. So just keep an eye on that because it can become useful, useful in the next days. Just uh, maybe a last thing to conclude. Great job, everyone. Uh, really good ideas. I know that uh, the um, Soren, Rafaela, they really liked your ideas as well. And they will also provide some uh, feedback and general comments in uh, the discussion about the challenge section on Slack and also uh, probably reach out to many of you as teams uh, in the next hours. So thank you very much. Maybe I, um, yeah, I pass back the word to Mike. So okay. That <laughs>
And, and thank you very much, Mata, for that term of endearment. And I hope I still remain your friend in 48 hours. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to go ahead and congratulate all of the teams again. Um, I, coming from my side as well, I'm very, very impressed with all of the presentations and cannot wait to see what you're able to go ahead and create within the next 48 hours. We have, um, we're giving you about an hour and 15 minutes, and then we will get together with uh, the lead mentors. And for those of you that are in construction, that would be myself. So I look forward to seeing my teams in an hour and 15 minutes. And I wish you all the best of luck as we move forward together in this Inno Days Vienna virtual. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone. I would uh, also like to say great job, everyone, for the pitches. Uh, really impressed. Looking forward to see them develop. The last thing I just want to mention, you know, if the lead mentors can go ahead and open the rooms uh, for any of the teams who want to use Zoom to connect um, through um, those rooms, um, we posted the links in the chat as well. And um, here's the, the slide again um, that shows those different groups. So um, if the lead mentors can open up the Zoom rooms and then um, the teams can use Zoom to connect with each other, get a shared understanding of the first two steps, who's your customer and what is the value that you're creating for your customers. And um, yeah, thanks again to also all the visitors and, and the mentors and um, especially the participants for a great opening and, and great pitches. And thanks, Mike, for running the show. In the same claim I made to Marta applies to you, Thomas. I hope I still remain your friend in 20, 48 hours. Okay, then I think let's let everybody get to work. I'll see you very soon. Thanks again. Thank you. So we will close this room and open the open office, tiny.cc slash ID open office. If you have any questions, um, then join this room. And um, if you want to use Zoom, your lead mentors will open up your room. So um, we might see each other in the open office where Martin and I will be able to help you. Okay. Thank you. I will end this meeting and we'll see each other in the other rooms.